Hey everybody, how's it going? You guys ask me all the time uh, how I sharpen my chains. So I'll show you. Um, chain sharpening was something I struggled with. Uh, I'm not a logger, I'm a saw builder. Um, I used all the gadgets and gizmos, uh, the Husqvarna tool that kind of clips on. I used the still two in one file, the preferred file. To various successes uh, I started grinding and that really helped but the problem was when I got into the field I still couldn't sharpen then I found uh, Buckins videos on sharpening years ago and I was like wow look at this guy go zing 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 so um, I need to sharpen this chain right now just touch it up it's not overly bad but uh, I'll show you guys how I sharpen it's actually very simple it uh, it's something anybody can learn. It just takes a little practice. Note guides, just a straight, just a straight file and, uh, and sharpen it. So I'm going to bring you guys in close and let's sharpen a chain. Okay. For those of you that are new to chain sharpening. Okay. Here's your tooth. Notice there's a witness line on the back. That is the factory angle of the tooth. On this tooth, it happens to be 25 degrees, okay? I'll bring you guys down here. Notice the angle, okay? Now this is a double raker chain, okay? These don't cut the fastest, but they will cut. Um, okay, here's your gullet. Okay, your, your top plate, your side plate. You want all of this sharp, in my experience. The side, a lot of these uh, contraptions that you buy, they only sharpen the top. You don't get that gullet, and getting the gullet is what makes a chain cut sharp. You don't need low rakers, is what I've experienced, okay? Uh, you need a sharp chain. Okay, that's, a, that's basically a factory raker. I might take it down a little bit, but again, notice... Notice the shape there, okay? This is 7 30 seconds file. It fits perfectly. It fits perfectly in there, okay? So let's do some sharpening. This is a 3 h chain, full comp. Snap you guys in here. Okay, so let's hit this tooth. It's slightly blunt. Okay. Notice it's slightly rounded here, okay? It's getting dull. It's still sharp, but it could be sharper. The, the corner's grabby, but this part's starting to get... It's not sharp. We need, we need it to be sharp. Okay. So let's let's hit that tooth. I'm gonna try and keep you guys. Okay, so we're gonna sharpen this tooth. Okay. See, notice it's starting to get shiny in there. Okay, we're hitting that gullet nice. If if we need to work on the gullet, I do the same thing Bakken does. I do the boat stroke. Okay, I'll go down sometimes. I'll go up. Um, play with your file angle and see what it does. Okay, changing the angle of your file will hit different parts of of the chain. Okay, uh, don't be super worried about. Making it perfect, it just has to be sharp, okay? And the more you practice at this, the better you'll get at it. Okay, now I tilt my file slightly up. I'm pushing down. I'm not pulling back or up, I'm pushing down. Okay, very light pressure. Now I wanna show you guys something. We're starting to get a burr here. You guys see that little burr we're starting to get? Right here, see the little burr? 
Okay, I'll keep filing until that burr comes off. Okay, you can just see the burr there. There you go, that little burr. I'll keep filing until the burr comes off. Okay. Okay, you guys can see the burr there. If you have a file that's tending to not take the burr off, it's too dull. Okay. Again, I don't count strokes. I've seen videos where you gotta count strokes and that's not the deal. The deal is sharpen it till it's sharp and make the raker. Each raker needs to be the same height in a in accordance to the tooth behind it. That's it. Okay. Now I'm just gonna keep filing this till it's sharp. Again, see that little burr just came off of my finger? That is razor sharp. Now let's have a look at the tooth profile. Okay, notice we still have the same shape and it is razor sharp. We've hit the gullet. We've hit the gullet. Okay, this whole tooth is shiny and sharp right bottom to top, the side plate. That's all there is to it. Okay, try and keep, when you're just starting out, try and keep your original angle with the witness line. Don't make your gullet too deep. Okay, don't make your gullet too deep. If it's too deep, it'll cut like a banshee, but it'll dull right away. And don't, don't let this gullet start creeping forward where you end up the tooth, the tooth will lay back. Okay, you want it, you want it to be like that. Okay, that's what it should look like. Just make it sharp. Like, if I touch this right now, it is razor, razor sharp. Okay, that's it. So I'm just going to do a couple more. You guys keep asking me, and I keep forgetting to do this. Again, I'm just a regular fo or a regular fella. I'm not a logger. You watch a logger sharpen? They don't have no... They don't have no gizmos. They just sharpen, right? The less stuff you can carry with you when you're cutting, the better. And if you put too much hook in the tooth, you're going to end up with a, that saw will cut, but you know, after 10 cuts, sometimes it's already starting to dull. So that's the key. Find, find a profile that works for you and, and stay with it. Depending on your species and where you cut, um, here here in winter here this one's been hit on the corner right here it's a little blunt here uh i have to run my chains differently in winter than summer winter chains can't be as aggressive they dull right away they they don't pull a good chip again i'm just gonna keep i'm just gonna keep sharpening this until that corner i'm gonna get a nice little burr and then all of a sudden, that little dull corner that I'm hitting right now is going to be gone. Okay, we're almost there. We got a little, little burr. I used to hate sharpening, friends, and now I love it. Um, it's, it's a necessary part of running saws. And if you're going to run saws, you got to have sharp chains or you blow them up. So a sharp chain just makes incredible amounts of heat. Oh yeah, there we go. This is a Oregon file. This is typically what I use. Uh, they're not the most aggressive file. If you're looking for an aggressive file, those Husqvarna files are, uh, they're pretty crazy. They, uh, they really take material off in a hurry. Not the best for the new sharpener, I find, because uh, if you if you don't hold your angles just right, um, you're gonna find that you you can really mess up a chain with those. Like to top the chips off, 
You guys have seen other people do that. There we go. Nice sharp, nice sharp tooth. Again, I'm just touching this chain up. I'm using light pressure. I'm pushing down. This chain fits my file really well. It's been sharpened once or twice. And uh, I find you guys sharpen a chain a couple times before it really starts to cut. Um, they cut okay stock, some chains. That Oregon EXL cuts really well stock, but I find a lot of other chains, I have to, uh, I gotta sharpen them a few times. It's just the way they are. actually traffic out here today they're seeding the farmers it's the only time where there's anything going on out here I mean people are home out here uh, there's not too many people that travel to the city there's lots of there's lots of people home out here but they're they work from home you know so there's not generally a lot of traffic out here Again, when you're first starting, just go slow. And uh, as you get better at it, you'll be able to go faster. And you can sharpen that chain. I just keep hitting it till I see that burr. And then the burr, the burr will just roll off and I'll give it a couple more swipes. I'm holding my file slightly up at the end. Okay, so... If you're right-handed, okay, I'm right-handed, so this is my weak side, right? Now, you're going to sharpen at the beginning one side more than the other, just because of the way your body works, right? So all I do is I pull with this hand, and I just steer it with my left hand. I actually prefer to sharpen with my weak side now, which this is. This is my weak side. I feel like I have more control on this side of... It helps to have a belly because you can you can uh, suck the saw up into your gut and uh, it holds it in place, if you guys know what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm just pulling and I'm not dragging my file. That's just it kissing the raker on the way back. Okay, so I'm just pulling with my right hand. Okay. I actually prefer to file on this side now because I feel like this is a more fluid motion for me. Again, if you need to get in that gullet, okay, do that rocking action, and you'll see it'll 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 carve out that gullet for you. Then bring it up slightly on a slightly upwards angle, and bring everything to the same plane, right? So I. I try and do videos on the stuff that you guys ask me about. I like those kind of questions because it's like, we all started somewhere and we all have to learn. And it's like, if I can help you guys learn, if that's my contribution to this youtube -y thing, uh, that feels good. I had to learn, I wasn't born, I wasn't born porting engines or, or running power saws. I had to learn all this stuff and if I can help you guys out, especially you younger guys, this kind of stuff is becoming antiquated technology. We live in a throwaway world. Um, why cut firewood when you could just turn the furnace on? Or for me, I need exercise. It's important. Uh, I feel better when I get exercise. I feel healthier. I have a better outlook on life. I sleep better. 
I don't always eat better, but <laughs> it's not so bad though if you if you get enough exercise and you have that garbage meal, well, you burn it off, right? There you guys go. So that's my weak side. Okay, the next most important thing. Now, I'm blind some days. I'll actually put a dot on there so I know where I started. I know that sounds silly, but uh, my eyes, I'm getting to that age where I need uh, reading glasses. I'm going to have to get on that soon. The next most important thing is the raker, okay? Um, if they're too high, this controls how deep, how much of a chip you pull, okay? They're also called drags. Um... I used to think if you want a chain to cut faster, just lower your rakers. That's not right. Um, if you get a grabby chain, okay, a chattery or a grabby chain, your rakers are too low, okay? Because you're physically, if they're too low, you're pulling too much of a chip. It could be five thousandths, ten thousandths too low. That's enough to stall your saw. If you have a chattery chain, it's in the cut, your rakers are different heights. Okay, so after you're done sharpening, I use the Husqvarna sharpening tool. Okay, you lay it on there. Now look, there's no raker protruding. So, you, so I did all that sharpening. Okay, that's the hardwood setting, and this is the softwood setting. Okay, I'll bring you guys over here. Okay. Now you want to see, is it sticking through? It's not. So what I'll do, okay, now you just want to take this, you just want to take this and make sure some of these will probably be sticking up because we don't count strokes, right? We sharpen until the tooth is sharpened. I'm going to move you guys at a better angle here. There we go. Okay, so don't count your strokes. Throw away the gadgets. Because um, a lot of those gadgets don't cut into, don't, you can't sharpen the gullet. Okay. And uh, if you don't sharpen the gullet, the chain, it'll cut okay, but it's not going to cut. Um, you guys have commented on how well some of my chains cut. This is how I sharpen. I do have a grinder. But I don't use it very much. I find, I just like hand sharpening. Um, just another way, just another way to perfect how my saw is cut. I can port the nasty saw, but if I have the wrong chain or a dull chain on it, um, it's not going to cut. You know, every second, third time, just check them every once in a while. And, uh, if you do that, you'll you'll continue all the way to the last. I'll go past the line even even sometimes the witness line. I'll sharpen to pass that on some chains. Uh, no problem. Okay, we just go around. We check them all. I did a couple on the other side already. I was just experimenting with camera angles. Again, we're just we're just touching the top of the raker. That could be the difference though. There, and we're right back to where we started. There you go. That is chain sharpening 101. Oh yeah. Let's go put her in some wood.
guys see that? One handed, pulling itself through the wood, no problem. I'm gonna make another cut and uh, I'll show you guys one more time. Okay, I'm gonna lay the saw on top and I'll show you guys. This is a sharp chain with the right rakers. Then I'll feed it and, and do a full cut. see that I was applying zero pressure for that whole cut okay that's how I sharpen my chains big chips and again the rakers are not low they're on the hardwood setting that's a stock setting for this chain and again stock shape more or less and yeah that's a ported 288 XP it's a monster anyhow that's chain sharpening. Get that gullet, folks. Keep your rakers all set right. That chain is smooth as butter through that cut. That's all it takes. Just practice. Throw away the gadgets. When you do, it'll be a life-changing experience. As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Later.